in the chat. Um, do we want to talk about tolerance and delay, Shira? Yeah, I think that's a good one. Okay. Um, someone had a question about teaching tolerance and delay. Um, and someone else was saying Gregory Hanley is the best. And I think Gregory Hanley is the best as well. Um, but we can absolutely kind of talk you through his articles and kind of what he suggests, et cetera. Do you want to start, Shira? Do you want me to go? Yeah, sure. Um, the question was um, just, yeah, how do you teach tolerance and delay? Um, meaning like denied access, tolerating no, things like that. So, um, so we use often Hanley's approach, which is give them an FCT. So start by teaching them what they can do instead of the challenging behavior. And then slowly, once they're using the FCT, slowly introduce um, the, the delay first and then tolerating no at all. Um, so we might teach them, you know, like the example with the iPad, if they don't like when they have to turn off the iPad, we may start by teaching them, can I have one more minute? And every time they say, can I have one more minute? They get one more minute every single time. And it's reinforced every single time. So basically the reinforcement for, um, for the FCT is the actual thing that they want. So it's not reinforcing them with something separate, but it's reinforcing them with, you know, either the item or the escape or the attention or whatever that function is that they were engaging in the challenging behavior for. So they may say, can I have one more minute? And you say, yeah, great asking, good job. And then eventually you, they would say, can I have one more minute? And then you might say no. And you would highly, highly prompt them saying, okay. And as soon as they say, okay, they still get their way. So they would still get one more minute just for saying, okay. So now you're reinforcing that tiny little bit of tolerance. So just for saying, okay, you're like, you know what? You said, okay, so nicely, you still get one more minute. And so they constantly get reinforcement for the FCT. It's like full, full, 100% reinforcement just for using that FCT. Eventually, when they're using that FCT um, more fluently, then you can start, they, they might say, can I have one more minute? You say no, and they say, okay. Or you might say, okay, no, first you have to do this activity and then you can have one more minute. So then they start accepting like that little bit of a delay and then they can have one more minute. So you're slowly incorporating that. The other thing that he says, which is interesting is that um, what we so often do is we'll teach the FCT, we'll reinforce it and reinforce it. And then suddenly we'll put it on extinction. We're like all, all the time we're having them tolerate no. Um, but what he says is that 60% of the time you should still give them their way, give them that FCT. So don't extinguish it so quickly because they'll start learning that it doesn't work. Like instead of putting it on extinction, you can only reinforce it right away some of the time. And some of the time you're gonna be introducing the tolerance and delay um, until eventually you get to the point where the student's able to use the FCT, say, can I have one more minute? Um, and you say no, and then they're, they're okay with it. Um, he does say that it should be taught kind of separately. So to teach this in a more discrete trial method before expecting the student to be able to show the tolerance and delay in novel situations, because it's obviously much harder if like they, you know, they're really worked up and they really want that one more minute and you're going to say no. Um, so expose them to a lot of teaching trials where they're getting like, you know, 10, 10 trials of the practice. You can move them through it as quickly as they're able to go through it. And then you work on generalizing, but when you're generalizing, you may have to you know, go down a couple steps so that you're not pushing them as hard until you can get them to the point where they're like fully tolerating it. Anything to add to that, Chana? No, that was amazing. Um, I think the big, big thing here is systematic, move systematically through this, you know, just, you know, once a student has the FCT, don't go right to, okay, no, you can't have it anymore. And that's it. It's got to be very systematic, especially depending on the student. And the second big take home point is that 40% you get your way whenever you want it 40% of the time so that you're not putting that FCT on extinction. Yeah. And then there are always those students that we have that, um, they know how to use the language. They have the FCT, they just don't want to. So you may in that case, just do a program. And I think we have it where it's just reinforcement for tolerating no. You're creating lots of situations. You're contriving lots of opportunities for them to hear no. And you're just directly reinforcing it. Um, it could be related to like, you know, I get to choose the game and I get to, you know, go first in line and I get to, so just like creating those situations where they don't get their way or they don't get what they want. Um, and having there be high reinforcers for just tolerating it. So some students may need that even as maintenance if they've done the Hanley program, but they still struggle with like accepting that no. Um, and some students just need like that 
practice with, you know, whether it be working with a peer, working with a therapist and just learning how to, you know, not get their way.